إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم عن إمامنا وسيدنا الرضا سلام الله عليه أنه قال إن يوم الحسين أقرح جفوننا وعن صاحب الأمر والزمان أنه قال فلأندبنك صباحا ومساء ولأبكين عليك بدل الدموع دما يا صاحبس وقف أبو كندون نسيس شاءوا ناس صاحب العصر والزمان إنه عند الدعاء زيارة الناحية المقدسة صاحب الزمان says Oh grandfather, I will cry for you day and night and will shed blood for you instead of tears So what's Sahib al-Zaman is doing today? Some of the maraja say put aside a sadaqah for the broken heart of Sahib al-Asr al Ya Allah, Ya Allah. With the dawn of the day of the 10th of Muharram, Imam Hussain led his followers for the morning prayers. Then he wore Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam armor and turban and put on his father's sword. He then stood to address his followers, starting with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, إن الله قد أذن في قتلي وقتلكم في هذا اليوم فعليكم بالصبر والقتال Allah has destined that you and I shall be killed today therefore I urge you to be strong and resilient in fighting then Imam Hussein began preparing for war and mobilizing his band for war giving the flag to the, his brother Abbas the troops gathered in the front of the tent where the women and children were held. Amr ibn Sa'ad alayhi in Allah, the commander of the enemy army, came with 30,000 troops. When Imam Hussein saw their gathering, which was like a torrent, raised his hand to the sky and prayed, Allahumma anta thiqati fi kulli karm, wa anta rajai fi kulli shidda. وأنت لي في كل أمر نزل بي ثقة وعدة كم من هم يضعف فيها الفؤاد وتقل فيها الحيلة ويخذل فيها الصديق ويشمت فيها العدو أنزلته بك وشكوته إليك رغبة مني إليك عمن سواك ففرجته عني وكشفته فأنت ولي كل نعماه وصاحب كل حسناه Oh my Lord, you are my haven in every mischief, my hope in every predicament, my refuge and defender in every ordeal. How many, how many distress that weaken the heart that makes the enemy rejoice at the misfortune when I entrusted you at you and re resorted to you out of preference over others you did not let me down and you did not let me down and had driven away and eliminated all these distress things you are the giver of every boon and the ultimate source of every wish to be granted then he mounted his horse 
and stood in the front of them, ready to speak. He began by saying, oh people, track back my lineage to see who I am. Then look back and think to yourself, think about whether it is right for you to kill me and violate my sanctity. Am I not the son of your prophet's daughter? Am I not the son of your prophet's successor? Was not Hamza the master of the martyrs, my father's uncle? Was not Jafar my uncle? Have you not heard the prophet words concerning my brother and I? Hassan and Hussein are the masters of the heaven, of the youth of the paradise. Whether you believe in what I say or not, even though it is the truth, there are men among you that if you ask them, they will tell you I speak the truth. Ask Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, Zayd ibn Artham, and Anas ibn Malik to tell you that they heard these words from the Messenger of Allah in faith. Faisal ibn al-Ash'ad said to Imam, submit to the authority of your kinship, kinsmen, the Submit to, the author submit to the authority of your kinsmen. They have never treated you badly. Imam replied, By God, I will never give you my hand like a humiliated man, nor will I, fl nor will I flee like a slave. La Allah, la a'atikum biyadi i'ta al-dhaleel, wa la afirru firar al-abid. Imam Hussain then raised his hand toward the sky and said, اللهم احبس عنهم قطر السماء وابعث عليهم سنين كسنين يوسف Oh Allah, give them no rain, afflict them with barren years like the years of Yusuf for they have, lab for they have labeled us as liars and have let us down You are our Lord, we, we rely on you, to you we return He then began to plead for help and rescue Umar ibn Sa'ad drew near the, near the camp of Imam Hussein and ordered the barrier of the flag to move forward. He then took an arrow, placed it in, its, in his arch, and released it in the this direction of Imam Hussein camp and said, bear witness for me with the Amir that I was the first to shoot. The arrow then followed like rain causing injury among the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Hussein then said to, the, to his companion, Qumu rahimakum Allah ila al-mawt al-lazhi la budda min fa inna hadhi sihaam rusul al-qawmi ilaykum. My companion, rise to the certain death. May Allah have mercy on you. The arrows are the messenger of your enemies to you. The companion waged a battle and fought for an hour or so. When the dust settled, there were 50 of the Imam's companion dead in the first ambush. When the Imam saw this sight, he said, Is there no one would come to our uh, to our aid? Is there no one to protect the sanctity of the Prophet's family? When the woman heard this plea, they began to cry. One by one, why one? The, the companions of Imam Hussein then asked Imam Hussein for permission to enter the battlefield to fight the enemy of Allah, bidding him fear, farewell. The companion then proceeded to defend the son of the Fatima, Salamullahi alayha, and were killed one after the other. Once all of the companions were killed, the family of Imam Hussein got ready for battle. The first to come forward was Ali al-Akbar. When Ali asked for permission, Imam Hussein could not hold back his tears. He looked at Umar ibn Sa'ad and said, قطع الله رحمك كما قطعت رحمي ولم تحفظ قرابتي من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وسلط عليك من يذبحك في فراشك 
ثم رفع شيبته المقدسة نحو السماء وقال اللهم اشهد على هؤلاء القوم فقد برز إليهم غلام أشبه الناس خلقا وخلقا ومنطقا برسولك وكنا إذا اشتقنا إلى نبيك نظرنا إليه اللهم فامنع عنهم بركات الأرض وفرقهم تفريقا ومزقهم تمزيقا واجعلهم طرائق قددا ولا ترض عنهم الولاة أبدا فإنهم دعونا لينصرونا ثم عدوا علينا يقاتلونا ثم تلا قوله تعالى إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم Oh, Omar, may Allah bereave you of your family the same way you bereave me of mine. May Allah send someone to kill you on your bed. Then he looked to the sky and said, Oh, Allah, bear witness on these people. This, they, the most similar youth to the Prophet has come out to meet them. Oh, Lord, deprive them from the riches of the land. Divide them and bring your wrath upon them. Ali al Akbar entered the battlefield, killing tens of the enemy, killing tens of uh, from the troops of the enemy, reciting and saying, "Ana Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Ali, nahnu wa bayt Allahi awla bin Nabi." It's Allah la yahkum fi ibn al Dai, adrabu bissay fi ahmi an Abi. أضرب غلام هاشمي علوي due to the immense thirst علي الأكبر felt and the pain from the scorching sun he then came back to the camp of Imam Hussein asking his father for a drink of water Imam Hussein told him that he is thirstier than his son and assured him that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi will be first to quench his thirst. Ali went back fighting with a greater ferocity. It was as if his grandfather Imam Ali was in the battlefield. Finally, Murrat ibn Munqib alayhi la in Allah approached him and he dealt a blow to, the, to Ali's head, causing him to fall on his horse. Ali then, the horse then took the Ali al-Akbar to the camp of the enemy. The enemy troops cut his limbs pieces to pieces. Ali al-Akbar cried out loud, saying, عليك من السلام أبا عبد الله هذا جدي قد سقاني بكأسه شربة لا أضمأ بعدها أبدا وأن لك كأسا مذخورا فالعجل العجل أو أبا عبد الله farewell Here's my grandfather, Rasulullah, from whose cup I have drawn. Never again I will be thirsty. He says that there will be a cup of waiting for you. Imam Hussein rushed to him, seeing what is remaining from his son, Ali al-Akbar. Imam Hussein threw himself on his son. He put his cheek on Ali al-Akbar cheek, saying, على الدنيا بعدك العفا. ما أجراهم على الرحبان وعلى انتهائك حرمة الرسول يعز على أبيك أن تدعوه فلا يجيبك وتستغيث به فلا يغيثه Life is not worth living anymore after you, O oh, Ali. How dare they intrude on Allah and violate the sanctity of the Prophet? Imam Hussein then ordered the youth to, ca to come carry Ali al-Akbar back to the camp. The women gathered around Ali, weeping, crying, and beating their chest. The turn now was the turn was now for the 14 years old Qasim, son of Imam al Hassan. Imam Hussein first refused to give him permission since Qasim was the memory remaining of his brother. Qasim brought a letter to Imam Hussein, which was from Imam Hassan, urging him to allow his son to fight. 
Imam Hafiz Qasim and weep emotionally. They, you, they both feel unconscious. After regaining conscious, Imam allowed him to go to the battle. Qasim fought very brave, bravely and saying, In Tunkiruni, Fana Najlu al Hassan, Sibaton Nabi, Al Mustafa, Al Mu'taman, Ada Hussein, Kal Azir, Al Murtahan, Baina Unas, Al Lasuku, Sawal Muzul, until his sandals snap as he bent down to fix, uh, as he bent down to fix it. Umar ibn Sa'ad al Azdi struck him on his with his sword on his head. Imam Hussein rushed to him, crying over his body, saying in a sad voice, Bu'dan li qawmin qataluk, khasmuhum yawm al qiyamati jadduka wa abuk. Thumma qal, Azza wa Allah ala ammika an tad'uhu fala yujibuk, aw yujibuka fala yanfahuk. صوت والله كثر واتره وقل ناصره. It is with great regret that I am helpless. You call but I can't respond, or when I respond but I can't help. Qasim was brought back to the tent by the Imam Salam Allah عليه. They put his body next to the body of Ali al Akbar. The Imam then said, اللهم أحصهم عددا. ولا تغادر منهم أحدا ولا تغفر لهم أبدا صبرا يا بني عمومتي صبرا صبرا يا أهل بيتي لا رأيتم هوانا بعد هذا اليوم أبدا O oh Lord, do not lose count of them and do not forgive them ever O oh cousins, forbear in adversity you shall never see disgrace again after this day when Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas saw the death toll rising, he stood, up, he stood up and ordered his brother Abdullah, Uthman and Ja'far to enter the battlefield and fight one by one. His brother fought and were killed. It was now the time for Abbas himself to enter the battle. He came to his brother Imam Hussein seeking permission to fight. Imam Hussein did not want to lose Abbas. Tears filled the Imam Salamullah alayhi eyes. Oh brother, you are the bearer of my flag. You are my entire army. Abbas replied, I'm tired of these hypocrites. I cannot stand the sound of the children crying out of thirst. Their their sound of their al-Atash al-Atash is killing me. I want to seek my revenge. When when Imam when when Hussein alayhi salam saw Abbas demanded about fighting, he said, "My brother, go and seek some water for these children in Kana wa Labud. Fatlub liha ula il atfal sharfatan min al ma'ah." Abbas immediately mounted his horse. He took the water container and headed towards the river, cutting through the enemy lines. He was surrounded by 4,000 people who, who shot him with, with their arrows, but he did not fear their but he did not fear them. He started attacking them, causing them to flee. لا أرهب الموت إذا الموت رقى حتى أوارى في المصالي تلقى نفسي لنفس الطاهر الطهر وقى إني أنا العباس أغدو بالسقى ولا أخاف الشر يوم الملتقى he managed to reach the river. As soon as he reached the river, he came down from his horse. He took a handful of water to drink, but he remembered the thirst of his brother Hussein and his family. He dropped the water on the water. He couldn't drink while Imam Hussein and children were still thirsty. Ya he filled his water container, mounted his horse, and headed back toward the camp. 
all of a sudden the enemy surrounded him from every direction they attacked him all together Zayd ibn al arqad and Hakim ibn al-Tufayl were hiding behind a tree waiting for Abbas to approach Zayd hit Abbas alayhi salam on his uh, right arm, immediately severing it up. Abbas began to recite, Wallahi in qata'atumu yameeni, inni uhami abadan an deeni, wa an imam in sadiq al yaqeeni. Najl al nabi al tahir al ameeni. He grabbed the container in his, with his left arm until Hakim ibn al Tufail came out from behind a tree and his, hit his left arm. Abbas said, Ya Nafsula Takshay Minel Kofari, Wabishiri Berahmet in the Jabari, Katakao Vidali him Yasari, Baslai him Yara Biharan Nari. He managed to grab the water skin with his teeth, staying. Staying without his two arms, he headed toward the camp, but the enemy did not give him a chance. They rained him with arrows, one fell, one fell in his right eye, and one hitting the water skin, causing it to spill. Another arrow pierced through Abbas's chest. Abbas now was hopeless. When he when the container fell, Abbas lost all hope and stood and and, and stopped going toward the camp. Instead, he stood in on his spot. He tried to take out the arrow. He started shaking out the arrow. He started shaking out his head. He pulled his his foot. He put his knees out. He put, he put his head down. All of a sudden, someone came with an iron pole, hitting on Abbas's head, causing Abbas salam Allah, to fall to the ground, calling Imam Hussein for help. Assalamu alaikum, ya Abu Abdullah. Akhi Adrik Akhak, my brother Abu Abdullah, may the peace of Allah be with you. Come to help your brother. Imam Hussein rushed to him, causing the enemy troops to flee. Aina tafirun wa qad qataltum akhi. Aina tafirun wa qad qataltum aghudi. When Imam Hussein approached Abbas, he saw the flag on the ground. He saw the two arms of Abbas scattered on the battleground. Abbas was lying on the ground, an arrow embedded in his eye and an arrow embedded in his chest. Imam Hussein cried immensely. أخي الآل انكسر ظهري وقلت حيلتي الآن شمت بعدوي أخي من للعيال بعدك أخي من للفواطم بعدك عباس My back is now broken عباس my enemy has rejoiced over your death. Abbas, there is no one to support me any longer. Abbas, who will save God, the daughter of Rasulullah? Imam Hussein tried to take Abbas to the camp, but Abbas alayhi salam refused. He had promised the children to give them water. He couldn't go back empty-handed. After a few moments, Imam Hussein was seen walking back to the camp of, to the camp all, at the, all alone, downhearted, sorrowful, hopeless, and weeping, wiping his tears with his sleeves. Sukaina and Zayda approached. Sukaina said and asked Imam, where is my uncle? Where is my uncle Abbas? Imam Hussein, instead of answering her, went to Abbas' tent and removed the pole. A sign of the owner of, his t of this tent is being killed. Zainab said, Wa 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 After the death of Abbas, Imam Hussein was left without a supporter. He looked around and saw nothing but dead bodies of his family and his companions around him. 
في كبتم شاورين هل من ناصر ينصرنا هل من باب يذب عن عرم رسول الله هل من موحد يخاف الله في يخاف الله فينا هل من مغيث يرجو الله في إغاثتنا is, is there no one to help us is there no one to protect us before Imam Hussein said his last farewell his sister Zainab brought him his infant Abdullah Zainab told him my brother this is your child this, this is your child dying out of thirst he can no longer breathe Imam Hussein grabbed his son and headed toward the enemy and asked them for a few drops of water then he starts kissing his infant son the enemy huddled around each other to decide whether to give him water or not all of a sudden Umar ibn Sa'ad told to Harmalat ibn uh, Harmat to stood all of a sudden he said to Harmala cut the dispute Harmala shot the infant with an arrow which pierced through the child neck killing him instantly Imam Hussein scooped the blood that was dropped from Abdullah neck and threw it to the sky saying اللهم لا يكونن عليك يكونن هو عليك من فصيل ناقة صالح. Then a shout came from the sky. اترك يا حسين فأن له مرضعة في الجنة. At that time, at that time, Imam Hussein came back to his family, bidding them farewell. يا زينب ويا أم كلثوم ويا سكينة ويا رقية ويا رباب عليكن من السلام الوداع الوداع وهذا آخر الاجتماع وقد قرب من كن الافتجاع واستعدوا للبلاء وعلموا أن الله حافظكم وحاميكم وسينجيكم من شر الأعداء أو زينب أو أم كلثوب أو رقية أو سكينة أو رباب مي مي May peace be with you. I'm going away and we shall meet in paradise. Be patient after my demise, for you have many uh, tragedies awaiting you. Then he asked for his horse. Zainab brought him his horse, saying, What kind of sister bring the horse of the death to her brother? When Imam Hussein mounted his horse, and headed toward the battlefield he heard a faint voice calling him from behind he looked back to see it was his sister Zainab Mahlan Mahla Yabna Zahra Mahlan Mahla Yabna Zahra asking he, she asked him to come down from the horse she told him there 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 is one thing I need to do. Come, come down from your horse. She embraced him. She hugged her brother for the last time <laughs> and printed a kiss on his neck, on his chest. Then looked toward the Medina and said, My mother Fatima, I did as you told me to do. Imam Hussein went to the battle and charged to the enemy by reciting and Al Hussein ibn Ali alaytu an la anzali fahmi ya la tu abi amdi ala deen al nabi Umar ibn Sa'ad yelled at the crowd mind he is the son of exterminator of the Arabs sit upon <coughs> Sit upon him from every direction. They rained him with arrows. The soldier cut him off from his camp. He shouted, Waihakum ya shi'ata ala abi sufyan. Illam ya kun la kum deen. Wa kuntum la takhafun al ma'ad. Wa kunu ahraaran fi dunya akum. In kuntum uruban kama tazamun. Shemer shouted, What are you saying, son of Fatima? Hussein Salam Allah replied, 
I am the one who is fighting you, and the women are not in fault. So lo as long as I am alive, forbid your thugs from harassing my family. Imam Hussein then attacked the flank of the army, which was sealing off the river. He managed to dis dis disperse them and make his way to the water, to the river. Once he was in the water, he extended his hand to drink. A caller shouted, do you enjoy, enjoy drinking water? While the sanctity of your family is being violated, he let the water spill from his hand without drinking and returned to the tent and charged the enemy once again. When Umar ibn Sa'ad saw him approaching, he, he ordered his soldiers to attack him from every direction. One by one met the Imam, and the Imam fought them fiercely. And af after killing tens of the enemy, and after being severely wounded, the Imam became tired. He asked the enemy for some water. Shimmered answered, you are not going to taste it until you enter hellfire. Imam Hussein was weakened from the thirst he, and fighting. He stopped to take his breath and from injuries and stopped to rest as he was resting. One, one, one of the enemy hits the Imam Alaihi with a stone on his forehead, causing blood to stream down from his face. Imam lifted his shirt to wipe the blood off his face. Suddenly, Harbala shot a three headed arrow at the Imam, penetrating Imam chest. Imam began to recite, Bismillah wa Billah. وعلى ملة رسول الله صبرا على ضمائك لا معبود سواك أغذري يا غياب المستغيثين in the name of Allah and by Allah and on the path of messenger of Allah he then raised his head to the sky and said, Oh Allah, you know well that they are killing a man, that there is no one on the face of the earth, a son of the daughter of the Prophet, but him. Imam tried to pull the arrow. Imam tried to pull the arrow out, but the arrow was deep in Imam's chest. So Imam bent down and pulled the arrow from his back, causing the blood to gush out. He put his hand under the, his chest, filling it with his blood, staining his hair and beard, and said, I will meet Allah and my grandfather drenched with my blood like this. Abdullah, the son of Imam Hassan, saw his uncle surrounded by his enemy. He managed to release his hand from his mother's grip, hurrying toward the pit where Imam was sitting. He sat in Imam's lap. When an enemy approached, he lifted his sword to strike the Imam Abi Abdullah. Abdullah said and called out, O oh, son of wicked woman, you are trying to kill my uncle. The boy shielded Imam with his arm from where he is for where his hand was cut off and began to dangle from the skin. He looked at his uncle and said, Oh uncle, they have severed my arm. Imam said to him, be patient. You will soon join your father, Imam Hassan. Harmala alayhi la illallah then shot the boy, killing him while he was sitting in his uncle's lap. Imam lived there for some time and, and every tribe was relying on the other to finish, finishing, um, finishing off the Imam. Imam then told them, by my, my grandfather's name, I'm thirsty. Wahatujadi, <laughs> 
I am thirsty. One among the crowd said, you will not drink water until you enter hellfire. The imam replied, I will sit with my grandfather in the seat of honor and I will complain to him of what you have done to me. The imam who started roaming around imam, staining his forehead with imam blood. The imam kept on circ the horse kept on circling around the imam as if, as if it's telling him to get up because the enemy approaching. Imam al baqir was quoted saying, the horse was saying, Al-Zalimah, Al-Zalimah, Min Ummatin Qatilat Ibn Bint Nabiha. What an injustice has been done to the grandson of the Prophet by his own nation. The horse then headed toward the camp of Imam Hussein. The woman heard the voice of the horse thinking the Imam Hussein had come back to them. They came out of their tent to see the horses without his knight, drenched in blood with his blood of his master. They began beating their chest, shouting, O oh, Hussein, O oh, Hussein. Zainab then rushed to the scene to see what is happening to her brother. She saw the Imam lying on the ground, surrounded by enemy. Zainab shouted, O oh, Umar ibn Sa'ad, Abu Abdullah is getting killed. While you are watching, he turned his face away from Zainab. Umar ibn Sa'ad shouted, Ya Sahab al Zaman. Umar ibn Sa'ad shouted to his soldier, Go down and bring him his peace, meaning one of you must kill him. Zainab put her bullet on her head and she saw Shibbal approaching Abu Abdullah. He came near the Imam, kicked the Imam several times. Hassan Imam with the Gliala Sadra and they sat on Imam chest. Shibbal then cursed Imam Hussein and cursed his father, Imam Ali al Mahdra. <laughs> Shabbat then took hold of Imam hands, lifted his sword, and held the Imam to die on his head. Shabbat caught up the Imam hands. Oh, Hussein! Oh, Hussein! Sakina Bibi